Herb, I drove over to my parents' house, ready to mow the lawn. It's getting real long. Uh, I sat down in the living room, and all of a sudden, my phone goes off. The Eagles make a big trade. Jahan Dotson come to Philly. Yeah, and I mean, we've been saying this since I think since day one of training camp. Uh, I've got a I've got a working 53 man roster in my laptop that I'm always kind of tweaking and checking every day, making changes. And under fifth re- under the fifth receiver, it just says somebody who's not here yet. Um, we knew we knew something was was going to happen. Uh, they just weren't good enough at the position, and they could have gotten by. They would have had a good offense, uh, very good offense, if they didn't make a move. But kind of had to. So I think we knew as soon as Nick. I think it was back on like day three of camp when he was asked about the third wide receiver, and he was started mentioning, well, you know, we're going to just have a committee do it. And the first guy he mentioned was Grant Calcaterra. Got nine career receptions and is a tight end. <laughs> it was kind of a pretty broad hint that uh, something was going to change. And this afternoon it did. It did. This is an emergency Eagle Eye podcast. He's Ruben Frank. I'm Dave Zangaro. Uh, we weren't planning on doing a pod today, but no, we, we had like an emotional goodbye after our last pod on uh, on Wednesday. Like we were going to have a pod for a couple of days and here we are. So we're back. What was your first initial reaction? Actually, let me go through the terms of this trade um the eagles get Jahan dotson who was a, the 16th overall pick a couple years ago and a fifth round pick in 2025 the commanders get a third round pick and two sevenths in next year's draft uh what was your initial reaction to the trade and the terms of the trade yeah i think the terms are aren't good aren't bad for the eagles they are they have another three uh so they've got a one to two a three a four and i think a couple fives next year maybe maybe just one five left but this is what how he's so good at is is making assets work for him and he's always adding more picks always adding and it might be three years until those picks kind of turn into something he can use but eventually you know he's got enough pick stockpile to to make a move and my initial reaction was it was a move he had to make not necessarily Dotson but somebody and you know you wanted you wanted a root for I mean Paris Campbell and John Ross are both good stories they're good guys they're both trying to overcome roadblocks in their career. Uh, and, you know, you kind of – there are guys you could root for. I think you wrote about Ross that first day and just, you know, his conversations with his son. It's like, how do you not root for this guy? But they just weren't good enough. And, um, you know, and then Paris Campbell missed a couple weeks with uh, with the groin injury. Ross is out now with a, with a concussion. There just wasn't anybody there, and they had to get better. And um, how he had the picks um, – Dotson is not a great player. Disappointment as a as a one in Washington, but he doesn't have to live up to those expectations here. He also had a bunch of different quarterbacks um, when he was in Washington. He was never in a really good situation. He had Carson, uh, Taylor Heineke. Um, you know, he had uh, Sam Howell. I think he played with Jacoby Brissett for a while. So he never had any stability. Never really had that. Uh, elite quarterback. Uh, I think it's a good situation for him. He doesn't have to come in and be a superstar. He doesn't have to play like the 16th pick, uh, but I think he's better than what they had. Yeah, he's certainly an upgrade. We'll talk to J.P. Finley from Washington uh, Commanders reporter in just a little bit to get their perspective or his perspective on the trade. But yeah, I think for the Eagles, we knew something was going to happen here. And I, I think Dobson makes a lot of sense. I think the cool thing about this trade is it's not like they got a guy in a contract year that they have one year of, he has two more years on his rookie contract. And if he look, if he looks great this year, you have that fifth year option as a first round pick. So uh, this is not a one year fix. I mean, this could be their trio of receivers for at least the next two years. It could be, or maybe it doesn't work out, but uh, I like the effort I like. And this is, I think what you really like about Howie is he's going to, he's never going to sit still. I mean, he's never going to not make a move and they don't all work, but, more than work than don't work. And I think they're a better team now than they were, you know, six hours ago. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Dotson's a guy who as a starter had like between five and 600 yards each of the last two years. Um, he's not going to do that here as a, as a, as a third, you would think as a third. Um, but I just think he'll be a, a better option than, than what we've seen so far. And it's nothing against Johnny Wilson, who I think has a nice future, but you're not going to have a rookie sixth round pick be your third receiver. He's just not ready for that. Uh, Britton Covey's had a nice camp, but you have to think in terms of, you know, you don't want to say it, but you have to think in terms of 
if they need an outside receiver to get you through four games, it's not going to be Britton Covey. He can help out in the slot. He's not an outside receiver. So th- the guy wasn't on the roster. And I I appreciate that they gave these guys every chance in the world. But, you know, opening days in 15 days, you couldn't wait around any longer. And uh, I, I like the move. And whether it works out or not, I think it, it was a smart move that that made a lot of sense. Yeah, and you mentioned, you know, having a, a guy who can step up if one of the top receivers goes down. I think it's important to look at the breakdown of Dotson snaps, even though he might be better suited in the slot. He has played more outside. About 65% of his snaps, uh, according to Pro Football Focus, have come outside, 35% inside. <clears throat> but having a player who can do both, as we've talked about, is really important in this offense, especially based on how many snaps we've seen Devontae Smith inside. I think that's going to be a really big part of his role this year. So when that happens, you need someone who can play outside. Yeah. Now, the one question is, how quickly can you learn this thing? I mean, you know, the team flies to Brazil in 13 days or something. Uh, so he's got a lot to make up. Um, and, and we'll see how much of a factor, you know, he's missed all of training camp. Um there's one preseason game. Gosh, I don't know if he'd be able to play tomorrow. I wouldn't. Maybe, maybe he can. I doubt it. I don't think he'd even want him to. Probably not. Um, so then you have a few practices, and then the season starts. So um, he's got some work to do, um, and, and we'll see how fast he can learn this thing. But uh, but yeah, you got a little versatility. You got some experience. I liked him at Penn State. I, I don't. Do you remember what you thought of him coming out? I thought sixteen was a little high for him. Yeah, and that was a little above consensus at the time. Yeah, yeah, and that's tough. It's a tough spot for a young kid because um, those expectations. I mean, when you're a top half of the first round, are are pretty high. And yeah, he didn't live up to him. But it's kind of like Saquon. Saquon's never had this kind of talent around him, and and neither has Dotson. So, how much of a factor that can be when? Instead of being the first option or the second option, now he's the third, fourth, or fifth, depending on who's out there. Yeah, you look at the top of that draft, the first receivers off the board were Drake London at 8, Garrett Wilson at 10, Chris Olave at 11, Jamison Williams at 12, uh, Dotson goes 16. After him, Traylon Burks, who's kind of been disappointing, at 18. And then there wasn't another receiver in the first round. The next one was 34, Christian Watson. So there was a clear drop-off in the receivers that year. I don't know. I, I think he, he showed some speed coming out. He ran a, a four, four, three at the combine shows good quickness, had a really good senior year at Penn state had over a thousand yards. I think there are things to like, and if he's not a focal point of an offense, that's not a bad thing for him. I don't think, I, I don't know if the numbers are going to be great just because there, there's so many other pieces of this offense, but in a limited role, as long as he's okay with that, I, I think he can be a nice upgrade. Yeah, and it's interesting how there's for, for a lot of guys just coming to a a new a different place, a new place, the old change of scenery, and a place that's got a lot of talent. Like nobody wanted Mackay Becton. He was on the street, the Jets. I mean, he's a starting guard. Now look, I, I don't know how it's gonna go. I think he'll be okay, but um, you know, a guy like Isaiah Rogers, nobody wanted Isaiah Rogers. He's gonna be starting outside corner for for this team. So sometimes just coming to a different place where you know, I'm not. I don't want to talk about the culture because that word is kind of used so much; it's meaningless. But coming to a team that goes to the playoffs every year and they win 10, 11 games every year, twelve games, and has expectations to be a contender, um, I think it can, it can. It's just a healthy situation for a lot of guys who maybe weren't in the right in the right place, were surrounded by um, you know mediocre talent. There's a bunch of guys like that on this team, so. Um, he's another one, and um, I, th- I think he's got a chance. And, again, they've had trouble with this position, whether it was Quez after his that one year in 21, he had a really good year, uh, you know, OZ, Zach Paschal, Julio. But Quez wasn't in that position in, in 21. He was the two, really. He was a starter, yeah. Yeah. After they realized Rager wasn't, yeah. Yeah. That's true. So – they really, they've really struggled to, to, to fill that role. And when they've, when they've, I mean, really, Jason Avant's the last like really good third 
outside receiver that they've had, or or I should say wide receiver that they've had. There's a slot. Um, but if if he can if he can be a 500 yard guy, it might be a little high, you know, 40 catches, 500 yards. You're happy. Yeah, I think that's fair. It's also worth pointing out that yes, the the price for him was not very high, but it's a new GM, new coaching staff in Washington. That sometimes happens. And I think that, you know, if you're Howie Roseman, those are the kinds of players you're looking for, you know, a, a guy who might've fallen out of favor with a new staff or is in a different kind of position than he's been in. You hope that one of those guys kind of becomes available. So Howie's always going to be opportunistic when, when these kind of situations arise. And I think this is kind of a classic one. Yeah. That's a great point. You know, Howie, how he looks deep into like every roster and it's his staff too, his, his, his pro scouting guys. Like when there's a change in the coach or a change in the GM, they're like, who might not fit in? I mean, they're big on that. Who might not fit in there? Who might they be looking to unload? Um, who might, who might not be a good, uh, a good fit for that system um, or who just might not be happy in, in a new role. And, they look deeply into that stuff. That's a part of the scouting process is how is this guy going to fit in um, with a new coach or a new GM or a new coordinator, position coach, whatever it is. So um, a lot of these additions kind of fall into that category. Yeah. And in that draft class with uh, Dodson, the Eagles made just five picks that year. They moved up to take Jordan Davis, but that was after that run of early receivers went. And we know, of course, they ended up the early receivers pushed him. You know. Yeah, it pushed him down. And we know the Eagles obviously still made a move. They went out and got A.J. Brown. So he became their receiver in that draft. But, uh, yeah, I- I'm curious what they thought of Dotson in that pre-draft process. I'm, I'm sure they liked him. Uh, but the way things ended up with A.J. Brown, you, you take that, of course. Uh, but now they get Dotson in the mix anyway. Who was their last Penn State receiver? Was it Greg Gary? Trash man, Kenny Jackson. Greg Gary is my, one of my favorite guys. One of the toughest wide receivers you'll ever see. Um, Penn State guy. But, yeah, um, can't wait to see it, how it works out. And I, I just, you know, how he's not always going to make the right move, but he's always going to make a move. And Give him credit for that. Yeah. You, you want to shoot. I mean, this is a – if there's such a thing as a window, it's open. You know, you have – you look at this offense now. Yeah. I mean, Jalen Hurts, Saquon Barkley, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Jahan Dodson, Dallas Goddard, Jordan Mailata, Landon Dickerson, Cam Jurgens, Mackay Becton, Lane Johnson. And I'm not going to let you forget Kenny Gainwell. Okay. okay. Um, of the starters, he's not on there, but he's going to play a little bit. We don't know. We don't know. He might beat out Saquon. <laughs> okay. And Grant Calcaterra. Don't forget him. No, you're right. I mean, there's, there's, and, and these guys have all played together. I mean, is Becton the only new starter? And he's really the only question I have. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. How many first round picks did they bring in? Did Howie bring in since the end of last year? Pickett, Becton, Saquon, John Ross, um, Dotson, Devin White. Devin White, six first round picks. And most of them were cheap, kind of. There's something there, you know. It's not always going to work out, but uh, that was kind of a hallmark of this whole off season. A lot of second round picks, third round picks as well. That um, they kind of he kind of went that route instead of undrafted guys. And if a few of them work out, um, you know, it made sense. Yeah, the Dotson one feels more like a coincidence. I don't think you know. What I mean? They just needed a receiver. That's true, but you know you got two first round picks from that twenty two draft, which is, which is kind of funny. Um, but he's twenty four. Yeah, this he's is a young, young player. I, I think that's to team. me that's what the exciting thing is. Is like if if this works, you have two years of them, and this could be the best trio. It could be the best trio in the league. It you could I, it might be. It probably is the best trio of receivers in the league. Miami's up there, but yeah, they're they're in the top two. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's uh, let's take a break, and on the other side, we'll talk to JP Finley, and then we have a new question about Jahan Dotson coming up at the end of the pod. 
you're invited to the Birds Take Brazil pregame party. Meet NBC Sports Philadelphia experts for a live Q&A all about your Eagles. Celebrate with special guests and giveaways. We'll see you at the Birds Take Brazil pregame party September 6th, presented by Toyota, the official automotive partner of the NFL. Joining us now on the Eagle Eye podcast, our buddy from NBC4 in D.C., J.P. Finley. J.P., busy day for you, I'm sure. Yeah, man. Um, we were live on the radio, and I swear this always happens. Like, a lot of sh- – so we have the radio station in D.C. We are the flagship for the Nats, for the Washington Nationals radio broadcast. And a lot of times there will be, like, huge football news and a Nats day game. So today, you know, this trade came down at whatever, 1130, and then we were off the air at 1230. And, like, phone lines were packed, streams going crazy, all that stuff. But it's like, all right, now you get to listen to Nats Rockies or whoever. Um, I'm not shocked by the Dotson trade. Um, It just – it hadn't felt right for a little while. Um, You know, I I couldn't help but notice the first preseason game – Jahan Dotson caught a pass late in the second quarter from Jeff Driscoll. And I'm like, wait a second. Dotson is playing late in the second quarter of the first preseason game with the third string quarterback. And that was on the heels of kind of just what we had been seeing throughout training camp. And it just very clearly something didn't seem like the right fit. I don't know. Um, So a lot of talk down here was about, potentially cutting him, which I never saw that happening. There's just too much value there. Um, So I'm not surprised they found a trade. I am surprised they traded him to Philly. I think it's great for Jahan, Um, you know, as a third wide out, ideally as a slot guy, depending on formations and stuff, I think he really helped the Eagles. Yeah. You you look at the return and it's like a third round pick and some pick swaps in in day three. It's not a, a huge price, uh, is that just based on kind of where his standing was with the organization? I think a few things happened. I, I, I think, I think there was some standing within the organization. You know, you've got a new GM here, new coaching staff, and I think they didn't want to hold on to something just because of previous draft status. I think they want to move forward and, and, and build with the group they want here. Um, and if you look at if you look at Dotson's numbers. He had a really good rookie season, and he was a, a, a really significant red zone threat. I mean, he had seven touchdowns on only like 35 catches, I think. Um, last year, played more games, touchdowns dipped, had more catches, the YPC dipped. Like, it just kind of didn't go great. But the thing I noticed the most last year with Jahan was – as a rookie coming out of Penn State, he had unbelievable hands, really, really great hands. And last year, there were just some drops, like inexplicable ball in your hands drops. And, you know, I don't know that that's like a lack of focus or what, but it, it was it was a noticeable thing. The offense last year was so broken. Uh, they had no balance. The enemy just called passes constantly. I mean, they were first in pass attempts, last in rush attempts, and had a – basically a rookie quarterback and a poor offensive line. Like none of it made sense. So Jahan's number dip wasn't, didn't seem that significant, but clearly to trade away a former first rounder that had seven touchdowns as a rookie and has played well against the Eagles too, I would add, but to trade him away with three, possibly three years of team control remaining and to have to give up a fifth to get a third back says plenty about, what I perceive Jahan's market. Like if they did this trade with the chargers, I think you could be like, all right, maybe they took a little less because they didn't want to trade him in the division or the conference, but they, they traded him to the closest team up the street. You know? Yeah. It's kind of surprising, I guess, from their perspective, I, I want to hit on something you mentioned that uh, his best fit might be in the slot. I know he's played outside and inside, uh, do you see his best fit being inside? Yeah. Or you got to bunch him up or something. What's what, one thing that started to emerge, is he had trouble getting off the line of scrimmage against press. And so I think you either got to send him in motion or trip formations or something like ideally he's really good. If he can get a free release and get out into space, like he can, he can run really clean routes. 
Um, but I, I think you gotta, you might have to help them create that. And, and if, if, if it's something that I can notice and, and coaches and scouts told me became an issue, like teams know that then, and, and they're going to defend it a certain way. Uh, I wanted to ask you about his speed. We know he was really speedy coming out of college. Has that translated the way you expected? Yeah. Uh, I would say speed and quickness too. Um, kind of quick in small spaces, but also has vertical speed. Um, yes. I, it's, he's not like slower. It's not like sometimes you hear of a guy with an outrageous 40 time or something, and then the game speed doesn't match the number, but he's plenty, plenty quick, plenty speedy. You mentioned he was kind of just like off. Things didn't feel right with him in this offense. How did he look? I mean, did he look like the same player and it just didn't fit the offense or was he a little different? I, I don't. Jahan's a, I think you're going to, when you talk to him, you'll enjoy speaking to him. He's a nice young man. He's thoughtful. Um, I just wonder if he was a little surprised that there wasn't some kind of carved out role for him that he believed maybe he had earned and that the new staff was like, nah, dude, everybody's working for everything. And then Deami Brown, who frankly, I mean, you cover the Eagles. Like I feel like I know most of Philly's roster. Deami Brown might not even be on your radar because he's been here for three years and never done anything. But Deami Brown's had a hell of a camp and has looked really good in the preseason. And Deami Brown would be the number two wideout right now. And it just seemed like that wasn't sitting well with Dotson. And, and, you know, maybe there's like a fight or flight mechanism that the, his just didn't flip to fight. I, I, it's just, you don't want, I don't want to like besmirch somebody when I don't know everything. Right. Sure. Um, but guys got the opportunity to fight their way to, to play well, to put it all in line and, and out compete other people. And, I wouldn't say he did that. But, dude, I, I texted with one coach after all this happened that isn't here. Some, uh, uh, like, since the Ron band dispersed, they're all over the place now. Um, and he's like, would you be happy about catching passes in the late second quarter of the preseason game from a third-string quarterback? You know, there's two sides to every coin. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, you hit on a little bit, but – how do you think he's going to fare here? Third receiver won't have a ton of attention on him. This is an offense with AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, Saquon Barkley. He's kind of behind all those guys. You think he can thrive in a role like that? Honestly, yes, dude. Um, I like, I don't know because all anybody cares about is fantasy. I don't know that this is a real fantasy option. I mean, they've got to spread the ball around pretty good up there. Um, but I, I think without major expectations and with a highly functional offense, this is a guy that, like, I think he grew up just north of Philly. Um, I, I believe I remember he grew up an Eagles fan. I could be wrong about that. He might be a Cowboys fan or something. But, um, you know, I think I already saw, like, Saquon tweeted out, Let, let's go get this or whatever. I imagine those two know each other um, from Penn State, like, I think I think this could work out very well for Jahan. Now I don't know that that translates to a thousand yard season or something when you've got the, the kind of receivers and backs and everything Philly has. But if I was an Eagles fan, to me this is a very low risk, potentially high reward kind of trade. A fifth rounder. I mean, I, I'm not even two sevenths or two sevenths. Like a a, a, a third rounder and you get a fifth back. I, Knowing you, you might have already run the math on the draft value chart. Like, I, I think this is a high, high reward, low risk play for Philly. Yeah, and it's amazing too because you have at least two years under contract, so it's not just a one year thing either. Dude, it could be three. That first year option. Yeah, it could be a three year deal, and it's not like he's making a ton of cash. Yeah. He's on a rookie deal for the 16th overall pick, and. What's really easy for Howie, say it bombs, say it's a disaster. You can just cut them. Like, you don't have the baggage of, oh, this was our first round pick. We got to try to make this work. Yeah. Makes sense. You can follow him, JP Finley, NBCS. You can see him on NBC4 and DC 1067 The Fan. JP, thanks for your time, man.
Thank you, Davey. You deserve a car that thrills you, a car that puts goosebumps on your goosebumps. At Nissan, we got everything from turbocharged SUVs to 100% electric vehicles that will make your heart beat faster. Experience the thrill for yourself and shop your local Nissan store at NissanUSA.com today. Celebrity cook Steve Martorano brings his Italian-American cooking back home to Philly. Enjoy Martorano's Prime at Rivers Casino and Steve's famous meatballs with Sunday gravy, prime steaks, and more. Make reservations at Martorano's Prime on Open Table. Thanks to JP. That was really good stuff from him. Always like chatting with our buddy JP Finley from Washington. Uh, this is the part of the podcast I remind you, if you have a question for us, send it to eagle at NBCUni. Com. If you're watching on YouTube, you have that QR code. You can scan it with your phone. Send us a question this way. We already had a, a question. Like right, the trade must have been just completed. We had a quick Dahan Johnson. <laughs> we had a quick <laughs> Dahan Dotson question in the inbox from Jeremy in Lancaster. Uh, hey fellas, maybe I'll make it in time for the emergency pod. You did. I'm over <laughs> the moon about the Dotson trade. It seems like a high upside wide receiver three who can play outside and be a sufferable wide receiver too if AJ or Devonte Smith miss time hoping a change of scenery can help him reach his potential my question is what's the most memorable in division trade you've seen feels like it used to be a no go but howie doesn't seem to care is there a chance we will someday see howie trade with the cowboys or am i forgetting a time he has uh he has uh it was during the draft but they traded up with the Cowboys to get Devonte Smith. Yeah, they went from twelve to ten. They drafted Devonte, and then the Cowboys took Micah Parsons. So, I mean, that was a trade that worked out really well for both teams. Only yeah. one of them has paid their good player, but it worked <laughs> out for both teams. Yeah, and that's uh, that's a significant difference. Um, I think Howie isn't going to follow like the old time rules like that, and. If you're confident in the trade, if you're confident in in the in the trade, I mean, you're not going to not make it because the team's in your division. Like, you know, you're not going to be like, oh, he might come back and haunt us. If you're confident in the roster you've built, you can't think like that. And if that's your best opportunity to get the player that you need or or the pick that you want, you're, how is he going to do it? And he's shown that he's he's not going to follow those old, you know, those, those old rules that used to govern trades and stuff. Now I'd be careful about it. You know, you don't want to help a rival, but um, yeah, how he's going to, how he's not going to follow those old rules. Yeah. And, and honestly, like right now, the Eagles and the commanders are in very different positions. It's yeah. not like the commanders are going to be competing for the division this year. So I, even though they might not want to look at it that way, I, I think they have to be realistic there. Like they're trading to the Eagles. Eagles are probably going to beat them and win the division anyway. Have we done predict? We have to do our predictions, but yeah, um, I think that's true. I mean, look, Washington hasn't been a threat to the Eagles. The Eagles do have trouble with them sometimes. They um, play them tough. Yeah, they they always do, um, especially in Philly. Uh, but yeah, I, I they're not the team I'd be worried about for the next couple of years at least. <laughs> And then, of course, the the biggest in division trade we've seen with the Eagles was McNabb. I mean, trading them down to Washington Easter Easter Sunday. Yeah, and that was a time where you're like that. Really, was the case back then that you didn't see many trades in the division. Now you see them every once in a while. Back then, it was really kind of a a no no. Yeah, I remember writing. I remember calling it the Trojan trade <laughs> <laughs> because I, I think. I mean, it was the opposite. The Eagles weren't concerned about, uh, you know, the trade help in Washington. They were confident it was going to hurt them. I mean, that's where their confidence level in five was at that point. Um, and that's how it played out. Still can't believe that happened. Such a weird, weird thing. It was crazy. I remember dry, I, I drove down for the presser the next day in uh, out in where out by the airport, uh, Washington's facility was way out by Dulles Airport, and uh, some guy, <laughs> some Washington writer asked asked Donovan, um, "When you go in the Hall of Fame, will you go in as a uh, as an Eagle or as a Red at the time the Redskin?" And I just like turned around and looked at him, like like he's gonna win like three games playing for this team. Like we know even how it works. 
yeah, it, you don't go in as anything in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But it was just such an outlandish question that it was just like, he's not going to the Hall of Fame, period. I mean, you know, he's a good, he was a very good player. But anyway, uh, yeah, that was quite a day. If you have a question for us, again, that email address is eagle-eyed NBCUni. Dot com. Relatively quick podcast. We just wanted to give you guys our thoughts on the Jahan Dotson trade. If you enjoy the Eagle Eye podcast, please do us a favor. Rate and subscribe wherever you get your pods. If you're watching on YouTube, please click the like button. Subscribe there as well. Rube, any final words? No, I'm excited to see him on the field. Uh, we won't see him for a full practice, but we'll see him stretching and taking some individuals. Uh, but, yeah, Jahan Dotson's an Eagle. Uh, exciting day in Eagle. Yeah. A lot of fun. That's it for the Eagle Eye podcast presented by Nissan, Ruben Frank. I'm Dave Zangaro. We'll talk to you soon.